Seth, I'm all for computers. I understand how information and bits work, but you want me to do something more. You want me to believe that the whole universe is a computer and that computation is at the, the, the foundations of everything. H how can you think that way? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? <laughs> One way we could take that statement that the universe is a computer is a metaphor. Right. It's like, hey, we live in the age of computation. Right. And when you've got a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> <laughs> and it used to be a telephone exchange. <laughs> it used to be a telephone exchange. Before that, it was a giant piece of clockwork. Right. right. So, so now we have computers. You know, next thing, the universe is just going to be a big smartphone. <laughs> but when I say that the universe is a computer, I'm actually making a technical, scientific, and mathematical statement. What is a computer? Okay. Let's be precise about this. The computers that we have on our desktops or the computers that we have in our smartphones are devices that process information in a systematic fashion. They're physical systems that contain bits of information. In a conventional electronic computer, a bit is a little capacitor, like a bucket for electrons. And if the bucket is uncharged, so there are no electrons over here, then we call that a zero. If you put a whole bunch of electrons over here so the bucket is charged, full of electrons, then we call that a one. And then when you flip bits, you like, you know, move the electrons back and forth. So you dump the electrons out, you put them around, you put them back in, and that is flipping bits. And at bottom, all a computer is, is a device that flips bits in a systematic fashion. Okay. And in fact, in order for it to do the kinds of things that our cell phones and that our, our computers and our cameras and every, our toasters, you know, all these things that with computers in it that they actually do, the actual architecture by which they flip the bits can be very simple. And what is complicated is the program that we put in to say, okay, have Siri talk to me in that seductive yet chaste voice that she uses, right? <laughs> okay, so a computer has a technical definition. It's a physical system that breaks up information into bits and that flips those bits in a systematic fashion. So what is the universe? The universe is a physical system now we've known for more than a hundred years that at bottom, every atom, every elementary particle carries with it bits of information. So an electron, for instance, it has a spin. The spin is quantized by the laws of quantum mechanics. It says it can only take two distinguishable values, spinning up like that or spinning down like that. So it's a bit. You could call spinning up a zero. You could call spinning down a one but it's a bit whether you call it a zero or a one or not. So at bottom, the universe consists of information. Every elementary particle carries information, just like a bit in a computer, except smaller. And when two electrons, each carrying a bit of information, come and they interact with each other, those bits flip, and they flip in a systematic way. They perform a logic operation actually technically a quantum logic operation because they're quantum mechanical objects. But if an ordinary computer is just a system that contains bits of information that interact with each other and flip in a systematic fashion, then the universe at bottom is just a big, gigantic, maybe infinite system that contains bits of information at a small scales. Those bits are interacting with each other in a systematic fashion. So. The substrate, the kind of computational substrate is there. And the only additional question is, is it really technically a digital computer? So can the bit flipping that goes on in the universe do the same kind of bit flipping that goes on in our smartphones? Well, I don't even have to argue about that because our smartphones are part of the universe. So of course the kind of bit flipping that goes on in our smartphones is allowed and indeed encouraged by the bit flipping that goes on in the universe as a whole. And even more remarkably, we can build quantum computers that store bits on individual atoms and elementary particles and actually do this computation at this microscopic scale. So the claim that the universe is a giant computer is not just some metaphorical claim. It's actually a technical claim about what is a computer. What is a computer? Technically, it's a system that contains bits of information, that flips those bits in a systematic fashion, and that's capable of doing what's called universal computation, which means basically anything that our smartphone or computer can do. But what is the universe? It's a system that contains bits of information at its most microscopic scale, that flips those bits in a systematic fashion, and that certainly can do anything that a computer or a smartphone can do, and much more. 
So when I say that the universe is a computer, I'm simply stating a scientific and mathematical fact. Now one superficial difference is that in our computers or smartphones, the hardware is fixed and the software enables that hardware to do lots of different things with the same hardware, whereas in the universe, all of the hardware is always doing the same thing as itself. It's not programmed to do something different, even though there's a lot more of it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on what you call hardware and software. So in, in an actual computer, we're accustomed societally to refer to hardware and software. But, you know, this distinction is not actually as precise as one like to think. So what do we think of software? It's bits in the computer that can be changed. But there are many bits in memory that are just fixed there. They never change. In fact, I think that 90% of Microsoft Word is just dead code that never gets called, never does anything, never changes. Now, physically, you know, those are electrons that are over there. Sure, yeah. and they're supposedly software, but the difference between that and hardware is not precise. So in the universe as a whole, a good way to think of hardware is the physical substrate, the quantum fields, the, the space-time in which these quantum fields move is the hardware, the physical stuff that's there. The software are the things that are open to change, that can be changed where you can flip bits in a different way so that you effectively program this piece of the universe to do something different from what it was doing. So for instance, when I'm talking to you, you could say that the, you know, the atoms and molecules in the air between us that is transmitting the sound from my uh, mouth to your ears is hardware, but the specific way that those sound waves are waving up and down to try to construct something approximating coherent language, that is software. Mm -hmm. You've specialized in quantum information theory and, uh, and in uh, really figuring out how quantum computers can work. How does that enrich our understanding of the universe being a computer when you introduce the whole concept of quantum information theory? I came to the understanding that the universe is a computer, which again, it's really a mathematical theorem about the physical universe. It's not some metaphor. It's like, here's a physical system. Is it a universal computer or not? Oh, it's a universal computer. And the way that I figured that out is by trying to make it compute. So I was trying to build quantum computers where you store bits of information on individual atoms, on spins of electrons, you know, so electron going like that is zero, electron like that is one, photon wiggling like that is zero, photon wiggling like that is one. And I realized, well, if you took these bits of information and just use the ordinary interactions, say, between light and matter, then you could get these things to compute, to perform a universal computation. And it actually, in some sense, though it took many years to do that, it wasn't that hard in retrospect. And the reason it wasn't hard is because I realized effectively everything is computer. You know, any physical system that has two different possible states can be a bit. And any time, you know, this bit changes its state, it's flipping. And so at bottom, the universe is already performing a computation. And that when we're building our quantum computers, we're effectively hacking in to this ongoing computation that is the universe. What are the implications of the universe being a quantum computer rather than being just a computer? So the thing that distinguishes quantum computers from ordinary classical computers is that quantum computers are weirder than classical computers. So quantum mechanics gives us this basically discrete digital nature of reality. Electron like that is zero, electron like that is one. But then it also allows things to be in some weird way zero and one at the same time. So an electron can be spinning up and spinning down at the same time. Actually, spinning sideways is up and down at the same time. Now don't ask me what that means. It's just some weird quantum mechanical thing. So the fact that quantum bits or qubits, unlike classical bits, can be in both zero and one at the same time allows quantum computers to do many, many different things at once. So a classical computer basically does one thing at a time. And if it's got, you know, two cores, it can do two things at a time, right? Whereas a quantum computer, even if it only has one quantum core, can do a gajillion things at once called quantum parallelism, this kind of quantum multitasking. And that has real implications for the way the universe is. It means that, that the universe is effectively not just doing one thing, it's doing multiple things at once. So, in addition to the reality we see here with waves crashing on the shore, or, you know, the wind blowing 
rainbows on the sky and more rain about to fall, <laughs> then there are other quantum realities out there when everything is fine. But unfortunately, I'm back in Boston and it's zero degrees. And, and you would derive those different realities from the quantum computing nature of the universe? Absolutely, because the universe is quantum mechanical, it's computing, so it inherits everything that a quantum computer can do. So the universe, by its very nature, inherits this ability to do many, many different things. Can you quantify that? You know the number of, uh, of uh, photons in the universe, at least the observable universe, and numbers of particles, and you can, can you put some numbers to the, the different variations the universe can throw at us? Sure. So uh, uh, the number of things that the universe can throw grows very rapidly as the number of particles gets involved. So there are about two to the 300 elementary particles in the universe. That means if each particle had a barcode, I, I'm not sure where you would put the barcode <laughs> on the particle, like in some sense the particle is the barcode, right? But if you had a barcode, you would have a 300-bit barcode to label each particle uh, in the right. universe. Now, let's ask how many things you could do with just 300 quantum bits. So let's take a very tiny chunk of the universe, like 300 electrons. It's much, 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 much smaller than the universe. This chunk of 300 electrons could do two to the 300 different things. So even a tiny fraction of the universe can do more things than there are elementary particles in the universe as a whole.